Ohana Chapter 7 Green Hills was in Chaz. Bless littered the street, broken shop windows lining the district and a damaged car or two here and there. One shop was ablaze and threatening to engulf the shop to its left. Robot parts were scattered every few meters but there seemed to be a never-ending barrage of them coming forward. Knuckles had flipped a car onto its side for them to use as a shield, shoulder pressed to the underside as they huddled behind it, tails working on infiltrating Robotnik's system with his modified switch. Tom, Maddie, and Wade were organizing a safe zone in the school, Sonic dropping off humans every now and then to them and rejoining Knuckles and Tails where they were hunkered down. They could hear the doctor laughing manically in the distance behind the robot army, surveying from his hover machine and calling them out by name. Knuckles turned his attention to Tails, ignoring the jibes from the doctor. How much longer? Estimated time or revel keeps switching up on me. Time to tell. The kid said, frowning as he pressed a button or two. Anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes. That's too long. Sonic said, crouching but somehow managing to jog in the one spot. I thought you made the thing be smarter. He said a modified attack into Eggman's Dirty Beast, not that it was quick about it. Tails snapped, tapping his fingers impatiently on the bumper keys. Besides putting power lines down, there's no Wi-Fi anywhere, so it had to rehack and use his, but still keeps changing the password. Did you try hit that hedgehog one? That was the first password. In any case, passwords should contain at least one capital and one number. For example, yours would be too dumb to live. Hey. We can argue about schematics later. Knuckles interrupted, feeling another round of bullets hit the car. It was about time to swap this one out for another. Even if he's too dumb to live. Now you guys are just being mean. Sonic pouted. I thought I was your favorite, Tails. Knuckles bribed me with mints before we left. Think you were ready to try something new, Sonic? The hedgehog blinked at him, then nodded eagerly, practically hopping over Tails like they were playing leapfrog in the backyard. What's the plan? You're going to call up into your spin and I'm going to throw you at the bandits. He was met with an oldish stare before Sonic grinned. Alright, you me like a football it is. It was his turn to stare as Tails groaned into his switch. What like a what? You me like a football. Please don't teach him in culture. I got it enough from you. Tails whined, his ears pressing flat against his head as Sonic laughed to himself at the edge of his confusion, stretching his arms over his head and rolling his shoulders. The kid stood from his seat and began walking over to another car that Knuckles had previously tipped on its side. I'm serious, if there's two of you, I'm designing you both. I'll tell you later. Sonic promised Knuckles at the look of bewilderment on his face before he crutched down in runner position. Fingers barely touching the rug before he started spinning himself in place. Blue lightning crackled around him as Knuckles picked him up, waited for Tails to find cover, and kicked over the damaged car they had been taking shelter behind, sending on the base. At least a couple of dozen robots remained, the big doors of the doctor's vehicle closed and encasing his assistant. Spinning on one foot like a baseball player, he launched him forth watching him smash into and around the robots like a ball in a pinball machine before rushing forward himself. Honestly, he had been surprised that it had taken the doctor this long to come back, but no matter, this was his home now, and he would defend it with as much ferocity as he had Angle's line. Knuckles' fist drew back and crackled with his own chest energy as he slammed it into a robot that was taking aim at Tail's cover swiftly following it with a low sweep of his leg into another, and rolling to the side to watch them blow up. Or short circuit into a third, Sonic came to a stop beside him, 
his power moving around him in a motion that made Knuckles feel sick in his stomach from the amount of Chen's energy radiating from the hedgehog, spines arching. Ready to finish this. You little pest. Knuckles' vision blurred when he saw Robotnik point his machine's lasers at Sonic, his energy gathering at their tips, his fur glowed pink, body checking the younger Mobian out of the way and unable to stop the blood from choking out of his throat when he felt the energy lance across his side, he hit the road rolled, and came to a stop next to where Sonic had landed, blast cutting into his leg and hand as he leaned on them, ignoring the sting. He vaguely heard Sonic speak his name in shock, heard Tails frantic yelling at his device, but he was focused on Egan. You don't get to hunt my family. He growled, almost feral, dreadlocks flaring, voice ancient. Got it. The electronics started to falter, the robots unresponsive, and Knuckles dug his fist into the ground with a punch when Eggman's vessel touched the road. Red lightning burned and sank through the air with it, the Master Emerald signature tingling up his spine and enhancing the blast that sent the machines flying backwards, hearing the familiar screech of the doctor and the not quite empty threat of return. Knuckles remained like that, on his knees and hands, panting, blood coming from his mouth and trickling down his side before he collapsed to the side into Sonic's waiting arms and promptly passed out. You use too much again. The words came from the Echida kneeling next to him, gingerly touching his forehead with the back of her hand. The Master Emerald Temple rose around them, but her glow was bright, penetrating the usual darkness that surrounded the altar. She sighed and cupped his cheek with her other hand, taking the chance to look him over and examine his injuries. You need to stop this, Knuckles. I'm fine. He huffed, letting the other do so anyway. She looked familiar, peach for contrasting to his fire red, green skirt brushing his knees as he crossed them to ignore the ashes in his physical body. You should see the other guy. She gave him an exasperated look before her lips worked into a fond smile. You've been spending too much time with that head hack. He glanced away at that as she took hold of his paws, uncovered, her thumbs running over his pads. First it's I don't spend time with anyone, now it's I'm spending too much time with someone, make up your mind. She giggled and he looked at the temple entrance, where the dark night ski was filtering in. Are they okay? Worried out of their mind for you, but yes. The human woman in particular is frantic, but they are fine. He sighed, a little relieved but also knowing that he'd have many apologies to make once he woke. Knuckles was familiar with these kinds of dreams. This landscape, this mirage, water circled the temple altar whereas before it had, the sound of it dripping from the ceiling a chilling. I'm glad. She watched him relax, curling her legs underneath her and leaning back on her hand as she looked out at the temple as well. You've changed. Good change or bad change. Good. She let her finger pick at the hem of her skirt, frayed at the edges as it was, and she leaned her shoulder against his. You feel... tense. Angry. It's a lot more peaceful here peaceful, before it would flood, before it would feel like he was choking on his words, the anger palpable, and on the tip of his tongue, he would lash out, screaming, crying, ranting, all the things that he forbid himself from doing, she was never afraid, never once, smoothing his dreadlocks back as he commiserated numbly next to her on the altar, face against the stone. A chill floated down between them and pressed itself into his side. Nuzzling his leg and yawning, Knuckles petted the creature's head, fingers brushing absentmindedly along blue flesh as he saw light beginning to peek through the temple entrance. I think I'm gonna have to go soon. I'll be here. The government had moved in and replaced everything in Green Hills like nothing happened. 
Tom supposed that was the good thing about them knowing of his kids, but it still unnerved him that nothing looked like it had changed, or that there had been a battle. How long had they had to prepare the shop fronts, the replacement cars, the hush money? Commander Tower had barely cast a glance at him while supervising the cleanup crew, assuring him that he should be more worried about his family and that they would take care of the town. He didn't like secrets. Maddie had set up a spare cut in the den, next to the cutch, and had barely gotten up except for a few things. Sonic wasn't much better. It was unusual to see the hedgehog so great, fingers fidgeting in his lap as he and Tails watched some movie or other, occasionally glancing at Maddie and the etched on the cot. Every now and then Tails would say something quietly to him and he would get an awkward smile before he was reassured, like quickly, that Knuckles was going to be okay. That had been three days ago, and Knuckles had so much as moved a quill. Tom set his mug of coffee down in his hand as he watched Maddie Gingerly replace the bandages that she had wrapped around his wounds herself. Having told the veterinary clinic that she wouldn't be in due to personal reasons, Sonic and Tails had been convinced to sleep upstairs despite their willingness to turn the den into a sleepover, sleep finally getting the better of the young Obians with O.C. guarding Sonic's bed. You need sleep too. He reminded his wife, coming to her side to place a gentle hand on her shoulder. She paused in her regressing, inhaling, and then continuing as she exhaled, and he realized her hands were trembling. I'm fine, Tom. You'll be fine if you take your eyes off him for a few hours. Maddie's fingers slipped away as she raised a hand to wipe at her cheek, taking in a shuddering breath, and he realized she was trying to keep herself from crying. What kind of bit am I if I can't do anything for him? She said, sounding almost angry with herself as she finished the dressing. What kind of mother am I? My early your best. Tom soothed, sitting down next to her on the couch and wrapping his arm around her shoulder, looking over her at the Elaine kid, the cot making him seem smaller than his three and a half to four feet. You are doing your best. How'd the reconstruction go? Too quickly. He muttered, noting that she had changed the subject to distract herself. I know where everything should go. It's like they were observing green hills. She made a face and took his hand, sealing his coffee with her other and taking a... Well, that's disturbing. Maddie muttered into the mug, handing it back to her husband and looking at him with some concern. What if they're planning something? Then we'll deal with it when the time comes. Tom responded, squeezing her fingers and lifting her hand to kiss the back of it. One thing at a time. One thing at a time. Maddie sighed, flopping herself back against the couch, resting their hands in her lap. Sonic and Miles go to sleep. Like a light. He followed suit, careful with his coffee and letting her curl into him. When did we become parents? The second you showed up at my sister's house with a blue alien passed out in your car. He couldn't argue with that. Tails told me that happened. He said Knuckles pushed Sonic out of the way and that Sonic feels guilty about it. I'll talk with him tomorrow. Maddie made a small noise and rested her head on his shoulder, eyes flicking to the TV in the background where the national news was playing. No mention of a battle had come up across media, social or otherwise, and no mention of aliens. Again, it had unnerved him. Maddie made a small noise. A noise interrupted her thoughts and she startled, drawing herself away from Tom as Knuckles' head turned, blinking blurly at them and raising a hand to his forehead, hissing softly when he touched it. Charles. His voice was hoarse, scratch, and he jerked when Maddie threw her arms around his shoulders. Oh. Don't you ever scare me like that again, Knuckles Wachowski. She scolded, half laughing, half crying with relief before she pulled back, realizing she'd overdone it in her joy. 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but you think we didn't know if you... What day is it? Freddy. Tom say, joining his wife at the side of the cot. <laughs> the fight happened on Tuesday. Knuckles seemed to register the words and counted in his head, drawing himself up before he winced and looked down at the bandages that Maddie had previously wrapped so carefully around his waist. The bottom stairs squeak and there was a blue blur suddenly at his side. Sonic punched his arm, oblivious to the yelp of pain that left the itch in us he glared sleepily at him. Don't do that again, you big jerk. He whimpered, ears flattening against his head as Knuckles rubbed his shoulder. Thought I could go back to bed. I wanted a glass of water. The hedgehog said, pouting at Tom who could only half-heartedly scold him. He inhaled sharply before exhaling, green meeting purple before he hit Knuckles again. And then I saw this jerk awake. Gee, that's the thanks I get. He half understood Sonic's concern, even if from the little bits and pieces that he'd picked up over the months they'd been living together, he knew that someone important to him had saved him, that he hadn't seen her ever again. That he looked hurt and angry at the same time the first few months they'd known each other. Somehow his species was involved, and knowing other tribes and their hunger for power, he couldn't say you blamed him for it. Sonic wrapped his arms around him in a hug, burying himself in his chest as he mumbled. Thanks for not dying. What's going on? Tail's sleepy voice interrupted the argument that was about to break out, clutching the blanket that Knuckles had given him during the storm a month or so back and rubbing his eyes. The four of them looked at him, before Knuckles broke out into a chuckle that made him call as it hurt his ribs. He was home, 